Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry 5. Today is finally V-Day. That's right, we get to play as V after a prologue and three missions of playing as Nero. And we have plenty of red orbs with which to pick up new abilities. Uh, first, we're going to come into a menu that we have not even glimpsed yet. Uh, which is the items menu. You'll notice a lack of uh, things like vital stars. They are just not in this game. There are gold orbs, which will resurrect you on the spot as usual. Uh, otherwise, you can choose to continue from a checkpoint if you die. Or you can actually pay an increasing number of red orbs as well to do the job of, of uh, gold orbs. Which is actually pretty generous, I think. But we won't be using any of those anyway. Uh, we picked up a bunch of purple orbs. They will increase the size of our Devil Trigger Gauge, which is not something that we've had to deal with with Nero. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But if you've played previous Devil May Cry games, you know what that's all about. It is a special resource. Uh, which, V is our, our actual first character to utilize that resource in 5. Uh, I adore playing around with V. He's so different from anything else. He's unlike any other character action uh, character. He's unlike anyone else in Devil May Cry, especially. And that's because he is a summoner archetype. Uh, v himself does not get up close and personal very often. Instead, he uses familiars like Griffin and Shadow. And Nightmare. <laughs> Shadow mm, fits right in with them anyway, because he may as well have been a boss in DMC1. With how huge its moveset was. And they all have pretty much all of their Devil May Cry 1 attacks. Control-wise, uh, one button controls Griffin, who is essentially your gun. The other is for Shadow. And then, when you summon Nightmare... Nightmare will just... Oh, I just want to make sure I have the right command for that. Uh, Nightmare will essentially act on his own when you call him in. But he'll drain that purple gauge in the top left, which is your Devil Trigger Bar. Oh, I love this. This is his version of speed or run, where he surfs on shadow. Oh, geniuses, be careful. Yeah, no shit, Shirley. Ain't that right, Pete? I mean, you are fragile at the moment. Wouldn't take much to wipe you out in a sticky situation. I'm just saying that running away is okay. It's always okay to run away if you're not a boy. He who desires but act not breeds pestilence. So it is written. Okay, Shakespeare. Just remember this. You and I like to exist, so get rid of those demons quick, cause killing them ain't my stick. I got your back. Cause dying is whack. I love the way that Griffin kind of makes fun of V. And V's love for poetry by just rhyming really shittily. <laughs> And for as slow as V's normal movement is, teleporting around with him and latching on to Griffin's talons and his side dodge with Shadow, it all feels super good to move around with him. Did I mention the good ass Noctis teleports? It's pretty dope. Oh, V kicks so much ass. Because V himself does not really involve himself in the action except to finish enemies off. So you're hanging back and just surveying the battlefield and micromanaging pets. While keeping V safe. Oh, it's such a... Ah, oh God, it's so good. And so different. There really isn't another character in, like, a stylish action game that's anything like him. And yet he fits in so well. 
He also has a button that's dedicated to just reading from his book. And that will charge his Devil Trigger. That book, by the way, uh, is just a collection of poems by William Blake, who he's been quoting continuously uh, since his introduction. One of Nico's tattoos, by the way. Uh, it's one of the ones just below her chest. Uh, you can occasionally see it in cutscenes on her midsection. Uh, it's Eternity by William Blake. She who binds herself a joy does the winged life destroy. She who kisses the joy as it flies lives in Eternity Sunrise. Uh, is the exact tattoo. By the way, as the stylish rank goes up, you'll notice a different song. Each character has their own main theme. Uh, for Nero, it was Devil Trigger. For V, it's something very different and vastly inferior, uh, Crimson Cloud. Dante's is, is subhuman, and we will hear that probably one time before I switch it out for a different track. Probably. Uh, actually, I'm not sure which alternate tracks or even in the game. I'm assuming, like, lock and load would be one of them. But yeah, subhuman is, uh, subbar. It's real bad. Also, I think I maybe messed this red orb mountain up. Ooh, it's gonna be close before this goes black and I can't get any more from it. Yeah, I messed that up a little bit. Oh no. Phone. Now is not the time for that. There we go. Uh oh, the name Urizen also comes from one of Blake's works. We'll talk about that more uh, in a little bit. There is a reason why we're not gonna go too much into the inspiration for Urizen, but you can derive some things, you can infer some things about this plot from that, if you know about, uh, the works of William Blake. Specifically a story called The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Wait, is that the one where Eurism comes from? Oh, I actually forget. Uh, also, the reason they used Blake for V, uh, is very likely because Blake wrote a story called like I said, the marriage of heaven and hell, uh, and it's about a descent into hell. Kind of like Dante's Inferno, from which Virgil and Dante get their names. And so you don't have to stay completely passive with V while you're controlling his familiars and summoning Nightmare into the fray. Uh, he has his own air taunt, he has his own regular taunts, and they're amazing. Uh, and then, of course, you're also moving around, keeping him safe, and all oh, this, and reading the book. He has another taunt like that, that's just him uh, conducting for Flight of the Valkyries. It is amazing. The majority of his taunts are so, 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 so good. Uh, this area that we're in, by the way, should look familiar. It was where we saw V fighting in the distance in Nero's previous mission. Devil May Cry 5 sort of borrows a concept from Resident Evil 6, uh, which is the intersecting campaigns. It's not done as aggressively as in that game, but occasionally other characters will cameo in the mission that you're doing. Uh, and the cool thing is that these can be other players directly, or ghost data that someone else, or even you, have left behind. That's... Why you occasionally see the uh, starring thing, starring the Devil May Cry group. 
I think it's a little obnoxious that it comes up so prominently. I wish you could disable that in the UI. Uh, but it's otherwise a really cool idea that's not terribly obtrusive. So when you're offline, it just shows as the Devil May Cry crew. Online, it would be uh, player names. Or even your own player name. There are also just occasional direct multiplayer sections when everyone crosses over directly. They're pretty rare. And it'll just use uh, AI or ghost data if you're not online, but it's still pretty cool. I will not allow him to gain any more power. And it subscribes to the less is more philosophy, so it's not a constant thing. Uh, those direct crossovers or direct multiplayer instances. So it doesn't feel like so much of a gimmick. It's just like a cool little occasional flourish. Also, this is maybe one of my favorite things from Griffin's moveset that uh, this Griffin takes. And yeah, Shadow has his complete Devil May Cry, uh, Devil May Cry 1 moveset. Including some cool little Easter eggs that you can do with him. That we'll be seeing. And we get our first natural purple orb fragment, just like with the blue orbs. Collect four of these and your devil trigger bar will increase in size. Also, you'll notice that we occasionally just get some white orbs or some, uh, I mean, the, the crystals are white-ish, but they refill the devil trigger gauge. So I guess they're supposed to be a lightish purple. They just look white to me. Maybe they are just white. I don't know. Oh, this is real fun. So Nightmare, when you summon him, does not always form out of the ground or come in on a comet. Occasionally, he'll do this. He'll destroy sections of the environment. Pretty important ones at that. Sections of the environment which will reveal important things, like blue orbs or hidden subzones. Here's part two of this. So as you get deeper into V's part of the campaign, things will get much, much more hectic. Uh, and enemies will be more aggressive towards him. So keeping an eye on him while you're also trying to string together combos with Griffin and Shadow, which you don't which you have command of but less direct control of, is really tough. But it's so rewarding and so fun. Like, he is a much harder character to pull off cool, stylish combos with, but when you get the knack for it... Oh god, it's great! Uh, so you'll notice when they go white like that and their health bar changes, uh, that is when they're in a state where V can teleport over or just walk over, hit him with the cane, and finish him off. But if you let him go for long enough, they will. Uh, regain enough HP to fight. I love his finishers. V is a blast. Uh, it's worth learning to actually play with him and combo properly instead of just mashing shit out, which you can get away with, like, you could probably beat the game just mashing with him. But that's not a fun or rewarding playstyle. But once you learn to actually use his pets well, and position yourself properly and Does do all of these things and combo with him, in a wild flower, hold infinity it in the kicks of your hand, ass! And eternity in an hour. Uh, by the way, I you don't, uh, charge his devil trigger when you read the book like that. 
uh, with no enemies around out of combat. Uh, but the other thing that this hole in the wall that we opened up with Nightmare reveals is not only where that blue orb fragment was, but also where this second Nidhogg hatchling is. So now we have two of them at the same time, uh, which is a first for us. And we're going to make our way out of here. There is a pretty insane degree of hidden stuff in 5. Especially stuff behind uh, breakable terrain that is not super clear that you can break it all the time. Uh, his back step, his, his uh, side dodges, those flash step style side dodges. Beautiful stuff. He's more mobile than he looks. Uh, just holding the stick in any direction. He's so slow. But again, like everything else, you have to actually use all your tools. And learning to do all of that well. Because you have complete independent control of everything. Of all of his different attacks. And V himself. You can move, shoot, and do melee attacks all at once, essentially. Like, look at that! That's dope as hell! Here, now. Just, like, some of these simple juggles. Doing Shadow's launcher into, uh, into Griffin's flank to keep him popped up. And then the mid-air uh, teleport finisher. God, it's so good! It feels so rewarding to just scratch the surface of, of using V well. So there is one hatchling, one that we would have come across pretty naturally and easily. Uh, but because we opened up that hidden path and went all the way down that alley, we have a second Nidhogg hatchling to use right away. Why are you just wandering around? We're in a hurry! Chop, chop. That leads to this uh, broken down building where we can jump up to the second floor. There we go. And there's a glowing red spot, so we know what that means. This is going to be uh, secret mission number three. Collect all the red orbs. Our first secret mission for V, no less. So there are 20 red orbs in this room, uh, this being the Artemis boss fight room. This one's really simple and straightforward, especially if you have uh, his speed upgrade. Uh, this is perfectly doable without it though, but this will make it no problem at all. We're gonna have nearly 15 seconds left by the time we finish this. Yeah, just over 15 seconds remaining. I think when I did this the first time without that upgrade, I had something like three or four seconds left? Makes all the difference in the world. And we have, I believe, one major fight and a couple of smaller things left uh, for this first V mission, which I very much enjoy. It's a very good introduction to the character. Or at least how the character plays. Uh, so instead of going left this time, we'll take a right into uh, this big open parking lot. Where we have kind of a small fight with a couple of the uh, Glycock. Branches or roots. Not much of a chance to style on him, but hey, we'll do what we can. Oh, that's not gonna work out, is it? <laughs> you 
<laughs> make me laugh. Gave us another chance to see another one of these very good taunts. And we're heading into this fight with full DT. Uh, another feature that you will notice of the UI is the vertical health bars. They are for Shadow and Griffin. Uh, they can be incapacitated. Uh, it's a state called stalemate. If they take enough hits. And then, once they're gone, enemies will relentlessly hound V down. Uh, and because he won't have Griffin for the back step or Shadow for the side dodge, V's mobility goes way, way down. And he has no offense or real defense for that matter. Uh, so if the if the pets do get knocked out, uh, if you stand near them, they will recover faster. Oh god. Like that alone, the feel of it is so satisfying. Whoops. And of course his jump has iframes just like everyone else. But you really want to be using all of his tools. You want to be taunting with him uh, when there's downtime, when he doesn't actually need to be moving. Uh, alternatively, I think even though he's a summoner with no offense of his own, just his familiars, I think it's actually pretty beneficial to get up in the faces of enemies occasionally, uh, just so you can control the positioning of the familiars a little bit better. Because otherwise, say you do a side dodge and call uh, Shadow back to you, Shadow then has to close the distance to an enemy again. But if you just get right up in their face and you can control them properly, you don't have to worry about V getting attacked, and you have your pets exactly where you want them when you want them there. So there's a benefit to doing that. Oh, I was hoping that was going to be the uh, Flight of the Valkyries. And you can also manually de-summon uh, Nightmare. Just get these first. Then use the telephone booth. Oh, shit. I'm going to have to go back for that. I went too far. Come meet me. I'm at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your panties on. I see ya already. Be right there. So I'm actually pretty happy uh, that I had to go back because I'm not super pleased with how the first uh, boss fight went uh, on the first go around. So this is gonna just gonna be a run back. And hmm. oh, skewer, we'll get that soon enough. Skewer is a real good one. I want blockade three and round robin two. Oh, and round robin three. Hell, why not? Oh, wait, I thought I already had flank. Hmm. And double check is one of my favorite things for Griffin. Griffin is a lot more active uh, than you would expect out of what is essentially the gun button. It's a little bit more active even than just having like Gunslinger and Artemis from three. Catched. I know you. 
dumb as a box of rocks. Let's not even mess with this guy, V. He can't even leave the Clyphod anyway. Just a Clyphod parasite. Uh-oh. I think he heard me. He's angry! Not in this lifetime. As the heir to a bird, or the sea to a fish. So is contempt to the contemptible. I love just this demon being very confused by V's highbrow use of poetry. Also, let's see if I can uh, get a fight in that I'm a little bit more proud to show off this time. I don't think anything went catastrophically wrong in the first fight. It just, eh. Felt like a very mediocre attempt. This is already much better. Uh, so once you destroy the kind of uh, piranha plant appendages all simultaneously, uh, you'll be able to get some real damage in on the main body of Nidhogg. You can really get that dick. And that's, that's the best this dumbass can come up with. To like really clap back. Uh, so you'll notice that I'm not focus firing one down and then immediately finishing it. Um, because I want to finish them all in as close proximity to one another as possible. Uh, that's the mistake I made on my first fight actually. Is just I would finish one off and then have the other two at full health and then you know, if I had a targeting issue and I accidentally went to the main body of Nidhogg and got a few attacks on him in. Some of the heads respawned with full health. Uh, the head that I would finish off. And I would not get as much time on the main body. So it really just dragged the fight on. Uh, because the heads do not all respawn at the same time. It's not like you finish one off and then it only comes back when the others, uh, when the others have been finished. They're on a timer from the moment they die. Uh, and they all have their own independent attacks. Some of them can vomit up like projectiles. Like that. And then the Nidhogg itself has a couple of its own attacks. Nothing too major though. But it's a good... I would say a good Cerberus-style boss fight. It's not as interesting to fight as Cerberus was in 3. But it's... Uh, sort of your gatekeeper. It's sort of like... Do you actually know what you're doing with V? Because if not, you're going to have a hard time with this. But if you know what you're doing with him, uh, it's a cakewalk. The cut worm forgives the plow. What do you say?
That was a really fun first mission. I am excited to play more of V and explore even more of his abilities. But that'll come next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.